Good evening and welcome to our lovely guest, Miss Sheena King. My name is Frank Salas. I go by the name The Talented Mr. Salas. I'm a man of many talents. I founded the Talent Tribe where I serve those with talent and I transform them into a thought leader. The next series of or this next podcast we're about to do is with Miss Sheena King. She is an attorney by law. And she is going to help us out with talking about protecting our intellectual property. And this is great for anybody who's looking to start selling digital products, making online courses, and also to just get themselves out in the online world. Sheena, tell the fine folk a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm attorney Sheena King, and I help small business owners protect themselves, their businesses, and their brands when doing business online. That's amazing. That's amazing. So uh, we have a, a shift right now here in the Talent Tribe. We got a bunch of people. They didn't know what their value was in the marketplace. We got their value. We identified their target follower. We've done their market research. We're about to aggressively enter the marketplace. We're getting our blog set up, our websites, our Facebook group. Our tribes are starting to form. And now our tribes are asking us for courses. They're asking us the same question over and over and over again. And we're saying the same thing over and over and over again. So we're now about to head down uh, intellectual property, course creation, e-products, info products, and so on and so forth. Before we delve into that world, can you just maybe define what intellectual property is and what it is is not? Well, basically, intellectual property is something that you come up with with in your mind and then you place it in like a tangible medium like on a paper or on a computer screen and a logo something like that that's your intellectual property because if you just keep it in your mind it's not really going anywhere but once you put it out there it's your intellectual property and you can sell it basically definitely and what is intellectual what is not intellectual property what is not intellectual property? Um, yeah, like is a logo intellectual property? A logo is intellectual property. Okay. Like basically anything you come up with, any creation, anything you create is intellectual property. Something that you've stolen from somebody else isn't really your intellectual property. That's just theft. <laughs> okay. And a lot of us are have a bunch of knowledge in our brains and we're now in the process of going from a knowledge-based business to a systems-based business and part of that systems-based based business is that we have to put our knowledge into digital products e-courses ebooks webinars uh, we have to put a lot of our fundamental processes out there like for me my uh, philosophy of doing business online is give value give value, give value, serve, and ask for business. And I have a bunch of different analogies and ways to make it easy for people to digest with. So I do a Periscope at 7 o'clock in the morning. By 9 o'clock, there's 10 other people saying the exact same thing that I did. By lunch, I do a brand new uh, Periscope and or, or a live stream, and I talk about something else and some new hack that I came up with. And by you know happy hour, there's 30 other people saying the exact same thing, saying that they're the one that came up with this. They're using my same exact terminology. They're going on and on and on about the stuff that I do. And, you know, it's cool. I like sharing, you know, and it's really cool. It'd be nice to have like a plug. It'd be nice to have some, you know, exposure and publicity. But at the end of the day, these people and, you know, are, and I'm sure people in their industry feel the same way. They're making products, philosophies in their own intellectual properties, uh, either based on or completely copying the stuff that I'm doing and the work that I'm putting out in my map, mind maps and my notes and my things like that. So, you know, we want to make sure that we go down this process the best way to protect ourselves. And for those of us who are just getting started, who are just getting those ideas out onto paper, onto webinars, into books, what's the first thing that we should be aware of once we go down this path? Well, I want to say, first of all, to you, wow, to all of those people who are taking your stuff, do you actually know who those people are? And I know you said that you don't mind them taking it, but you would like um, them to actually give credit to you. So maybe you could say something like, hey guys, if you take my um, comments or my teachings and teach it to somebody else, just give credit where credit is due. So um, 
as for anybody else out there wanting to create e-products courses, the first thing you need to do is think about your brilliant idea and just know people are waiting to take your idea because this is like the time of the side hustle and people are trying to get their own hustles on and they will take your ideas if they think they are great ideas. So I'm a creative person and I've always come up with great ideas since like I was in like primary or elementary school. And the first thing I learned was when I come up with a great idea, not to put it out there. So if I have something, if we, we have a school assignment or something and I think my, I have come up with the best idea, I won't put it out there until the last minute, until no one else can steal it. So if you have an idea and you, it's just an idea, it's just in your head, and you can't prove that you came up with that, that idea, I wouldn't tell any anybody about it. And the next thing is, if you do have to tell somebody about it, if like, for example, you, you want to get another expert's um, opinion on your idea, or if you want to work with somebody else, um, I would say before you even talk to the person about that idea to get them to sign an NDA and that's a non-disclosure agreement. So basically, if you share your idea with that person, they can't tell anyone else about it and they can't steal it and share it with other people. So, yeah, get them to sign an NDA, which is basically a confidentiality agreement, which keeps your ideas confidential. Um, yeah, that's the first thing I would do. First of all, not tell anybody. Or if you have to tell someone, get them to sign an NDA. I dig it. I absolutely dig it. Um, we have Tracy at Resume Workshop who says, that is what I feel about my system to my career products and services. So Tracy at Resume Workshop writes resumes for a living. And we're working on getting her to put her stuff online. Now, she has a process. If 100 people come to her, she does. She serves those 100 people in the same certain steps, just like I do, just like you do. And she wants to put that value or that knowledge as much as she can into a digital program. Now, one of her fears and one of my fears as well is that when we put that out there, someone's going to say, oh, this was really great. I bought this whole thing for 197 to 997, which is how much, you know, the average courses are going in the low end and high end. And somebody could buy all of our stuff for 197 or 997. You know, how do we feel more comfortable with moving forward down that path with us putting our hard work, our intellectual property into these systems and stuff? How do we feel better about that? Well, another thing you could do when you have created your own, um, basically your own product, you could copyright that product. So um, you file that with the um, U.S. Copyright Office. You will um, file a copyright application and give copies to the Copyright Office so that they know exactly what you have. And then if someone comes along and steals it, you can actually sue that person. And then um, you can get statutory damages and attorney's fees if they have actually stolen your um, intellectual property. That's a phenomenal answer. Now, if we're going to go down that path, do I, as a business owner, have to go on my own and say, hey, Sheena, I think somebody is ripping me off. I want to take legal action. Then I've got to pay you or any attorney a retainer's fee. I've got to hire them and procure them. And then the court, after it's all said and done, will then reimburse me for all of my expenses, correct? Well, um, a lot of times if an attorney feels like you're going to get money back, they may do it for free knowing that the other side actually has to pay them. Nice. They do it for free up front, knowing that the other side will have to pay the attorney's fees. But the thing is, with copyright law, if you um, you have to have registered the um, the work or whatever it is before the person infringes on it for you to be able to get those attorney's fees and statutory damages. I dig it. So I just spent the summer or the first half of my summer developing the talent school. It's the world's most, you know, 
collective growth hacking of all the social media platforms out there. I really put my true life's work in that one program, at least when it comes to social media. And one of my fears and what I've been seeing is people purchasing the course and then they're like, I am now a social media marketer and I am doing this. And they're like taking on clients and they're charging clients like, you know, money left and right, which is good, which is great. But it's like, hey, you know, these people are now teaching my practices, my methods. Um, and, you know, it's it's a lot for for me to have all that stuff go out there. And now it's like, whoa, hold up. Now, as a business owner, I don't know if I'm being taken advantage of at that point. Am I being taken advantage of? What can I do to protect myself? Or is that just how the game goes? I don't know. I would say it sounds like you would be taken advantage of. Um, like you mentioned before, there are trade secrets that you can have. I'm not exactly sure how that would apply to your business, but you could have a trade secret. You could patent the process or something like that. Mm -hmm. And when someone actually infringes, um, you can have, you could go to court and file an injunction to have the people stop doing what they are doing. And another thing is I was in a Facebook group the other day and some lady had this issue. She came up and asked, she said that she created a course and one of her students has come to her and says, saying that she actually is going to teach what she has learned in the course to her own students. And she wanted to know what to do about that. And I suggested that she licensed the course to this particular student. So if this student wants to sell what she's learned from this other lady, she'll have to pay the other lady to be able to sell what she's learned. I dig that. I dig that a lot. I actually have quite a few people in a network marketing, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with the network marketing business, but you know, if you meet one of them, you're gonna meet all of them. And so I have all these different companies coming up to me and the main person is loving what I do. They get into the talent school and they teach all of that from the talent school to the peeps. And maybe a few other ones come in, but I'm like, yo, all these guys are learning stuff from the talent school, which, you know, should be a fee per person that I put out there. That's a reason I put the course out there to, to develop that residual and recurring income. And now it's like one person is buying it. And now the friends and family are getting in. I'm like, I'm not Netflix. I'm not HBO go, you know, I'm not Apple music. You can't share the password with me, you know, how do I protect myself from that? Oh, protect yourself from them actually going on and giving the, all the information to their friends. So basically they bought the course, but they're giving it to other people for free. Absolutely, absolutely. How do I protect myself from that? Okay, well, um, first of all, you would have a terms of purchase. And the terms of purchase would lay out all of the terms under which they are purchasing your course. So if, for example, you didn't want anyone to basically take the course and then give the password away to all of their friends, just put that in the terms of purchase. And then the terms of purchase can either be like a contract you send to them or the terms of purchase could be like, for example, click wrap. So um, if you've seen shrink wrap on products, you would have to open the shrink wrap to get to the product. So with click wrap, it's like a contract online and oh, nice. you have to click a button to say that you've read all of these terms to actually get to the product. So they're agreeing to not give away the password to your digital course to all of their friends. And um, that would be the contract. So if they click that and they did give it away, well, they would be in breach of contract and you would have some sort of remedy against that. So yeah, it could be just a regular contract that you could send to them electronically, or you can have the contract on click wrap. That way, you know, they actually said they read the terms of purchase before they could actually access the product. That's amazing. That's amazing. I want to go back to uh, a lot of that lady in the Facebook group. So let's say she decides to license her product to her student, but her student's like, you know what? Licensee costs money and I don't have money. I just spent my last 197, my last 997 
on this course. And the only way, my only plan to make this back is to teach people what I learned from here and to make money on that. There's people that think like that and there's people that behave like that uh, in the online world. Um, what if the, she, she chooses not to take the licensing deal? What if she says, you know what? No, thanks. What? And she doesn't know what are her, what are the next steps from that? Well, I would also suggest just being an affiliate. That way she doesn't have to pay any money up front, but she can sell the course to her students. And um, basically she would get paid when the student buys the course and then the creator of the course would also get paid. So nice. if she doesn't want to pay any licensing fees up front, if she doesn't want to continue to pay royalties, well, she doesn't necessarily have to license the um, product, but she could possibly become an affiliate of the um, course. I dig it. I dig it. Phenomenal information. Phenomenal information. Uh, what is the difference between a trademark and a copyright? I'm very confused. Well, a trademark distinguishes your brand. Like, for example, I would assume the talented Mr. Salas is a brand. And um, a copyright is it, um, it protects your work, all of the work you've placed on a tangible medium. So it's not distinguishing a brand. It's just what your work is. It's protecting that work. So um, you could trademark a name, a hashtag, a logo, anything that distinguishes your brand or your product. And copywriting, you could copyright a, just basically any creative work that you've come up with. I dig it. I absolutely dig it. Uh, these questions are from Mr. Justin Brown, who can't be here because he's out broadcasting right now um, on the West Coast or on the East Coast, I'm sorry. And he wants to know what are the top three ways to protect himself legally when doing business online? He is a personal trainer and he gives out recipes, workout, you know, fundamentals. And he has his own, his own philosophy and school of thought on his material. That's obviously, as we now know, IP. What's the top three ways for him to protect himself? Okay. Um, first of all, I don't know if he has a legal entity but if he has not he would definitely want to get that to um, protect his personal assets from his business assets um, another thing would be for like his intellectual property um, normally you wouldn't be able to like copyright a recipe but if it's like really creative you can you can get a copyright on it like for example if you draw pictures of the recipe with the words but if it's just like a regular recipe list you can't but if it's really creative you can um copyright that um i don't know if he wants to put his workouts in a book or an ebook or something and he could copyright that and i know he is justin brown fit so i don't know if he would want to trademark his brand but that would be a great thing that he could do you are on fire tonight you're on fire sheena <laughs> So, um, so Justin Brown also asked his question, what can he do if he sees somebody using his stuff? Like his workouts, his recipes. Um, yeah. He could send a cease and desist letter to tell them to stop using his stuff. Like actually, um, I've had someone that I worked with recently who was sent a cease and desist letter, but it was for like a different thing. It was. The actual person was a copyright troll that was sending it. So it it wasn't really serious. But right. yeah, you could send a cease and desist letter. And if they don't, in the letter, you could say, hey, I stop using my stuff or I could sue you. So if they don't, you could go through with a lawsuit. I dig it. I dig it. And this is the final question from Mr. Justin Brown at Justin Brown Fit part of the, one of the superstars in the talent tribe. He asks, is there a way for a solopreneur to protect themselves without it costing an arm and a leg? Well, it depends on what he calls an arm and a leg, but I would <laughs> go, um, he pays for his phone access, right? So for paying for a phone, it's 
pretty close to like if he wants to file for a legal entity. I don't know which state he's in, but usually that's like less than $200. Um, also, if you want to copyright something like if he wants to copyright a book or his workouts or recipe, a course or something, like copywriting starts at $35 per piece. So that's pretty cheap. Um, where it kind of gets expensive is trademarking. But if you do the entire process online for one class, um, it's $225. But if you want to do it in if you want to trademark a brand or a logo or a name or hashtag in more than one class, well, it starts to add up. But just for one thing in one class, it's $225. So all in all, that seems to be less than $500 if you want to trademark one thing, copyright one thing, and create a legal entity that's under $500. That is amazing. That's amazing. Um, let's go back to uh, digital products. Let's say I have, so I have the talent school, which has all of my classes in one collective area. And it's like my intro to working with Frank Salas. But I also have the talent class, which breaks down one of those classes, one of those modules from that whole you know collection. And you can get a preview of what that's like. Now, a lot of people have been picking up the talent class and they get access to my PDFs of the slides that I do. They get access to, of course, the video training, the knowledge, the concepts. Um, so other than having some type of terms of purchase, some type of click wrap that says, hey, this is really great high level stuff. And I reserve this um, particularly only for your personal use. Um, if we see that you teach this for other people, uh, we are going to take legal action and have Sheena, you know, reach out to you and, and take the next steps. Um, but let's say people are, are on there and it's one of my competitors or one of my colleagues in my industries and they start seeing what I'm doing and they take, they start taking that. Like I'm dropping the product on emoji marketing and I just know that, you know, all this stuff's going to get out there. People are going to, you know, start dropping emojis. Our emojis are hot anyways right now and they're coming up. Um, what can I do to further protect myself outside of the terms of purchase, the click wrap, uh, putting up a personal video saying, hey, please don't steal my stuff. I know it's really good. You know, how can I even further just feel at ease? Well, do you want to copyright that or something like that with the emojis class? Would that be uh, can I? Interested in? Yeah, can I? I don't know. Oh, yes, you could definitely um, copyright the emojis class. And um, you could copyright the entire class, or you could copyright the school, or you could copyright all together and separately. And that way, if someone steals, I would say, the class, and you could um, get damages for the, the part of it that's in the school and then the class itself. So that would open you up to gain more from damages if they actually come back to steal that and use it for themselves. So awesome. the more you copyright, the more you can copyright something, the more potential damages you can get. And um, since um, copyright law has damages, statutory damages um, automatically, um, a person would more than likely settle with you outside of court rather than to go to court and have to hire a lawyer. So you're, you more than likely would get some payment. Nice. I dig it. I dig it. Um, so I do business all over the world. Uh, we have a few international people on right now. Like we have somebody, we have a uh, Claudia Santiago in Canada. We also have uh, sunshine lady, Annette in Munich, one of our superstars or two of our superstars, I should say from around the globe. Um, let's say, we have somebody in Sydney or the Philippines and they purchase one of my courses and you know, same thing. They're out dropping my stuff, selling the products for whatever. Uh, obviously I can send them to cease and desist. I can go through those processes that you outlined, but it's online. It's in social media. How enforceable uh, would something like this work? Well, it would definitely depend on the country they are in because the U S has treaties with, other countries that they will protect your intellectual property for as far as copyrights. Um, I know there's the Berne Convention, but you would definitely need to um, 
um, look into that. If someone in another country actually steals your stuff, you would want to know if this particular country has a treaty with the United States where they would protect your um, federally copyrighted intellectual property. And then as far as trademarking, um, you could file um, trademarks um, in different countries. Um, it's a um, kind of straightforward, not so difficult process. You could trademark in different countries and then um, receive protection there as well. Awesome. Awesome. Way cool. Well, Sheena, you've been such, such, such a help to us here at Talent Tribe. We always want to definitely uh, commend you and give you lots of props for just giving us all this much needed knowledge, much needed knowledge on becoming, you know, uh, safe, protecting our investments. Where can people find you? How can we work with you if we're interested in working with Sheena? Okay, I see one more question before I answer that. But um, Dr. Okay, cool. A.D. Finch asked me um, if you can copyright a series of classes as one thing. So, for example, um, I have something called, well, I was starting a uh, business law school, but it would have different classes in it. So, yes, you if it's something, um, if it's part of the, if the series, if the classes are part of the same series, you can definitely copyright that. And I would copyright that as the business law school and it would cover these trademarks, copyrights, branding, things like that. So yes, you can definitely copyright a series of classes and then you could copyright each class themselves. And like I was telling Frank earlier, um, if someone does um, try to steal like one of your classes and it's trademark as a, I mean, it's copyright as a class and as part of the series, you can potentially get more damages that way than just having it copyrighted um, just on its own. Interesting. Really good eye. Good eye. I didn't see that question from our live studio audience here on Blab. Um, so uh, really appreciate you giving us those uh, answers to the questions. We got um, another question that comes in. Does the bootleg copyright method work or is it false since so many people believe in it? mailing an envelope to themselves. I don't even know what the bootleg copyright method is. It's called the poor man's copyright. People are saying that if you create something, like for example, if you write a book, you put it in an envelope and you mail it to yourself, you have a copyright on that. That is not true. You do not <laughs> get a federal copyright by mailing something to yourself. The only thing I could think that that would establish is that for example, if someone later comes on and steals your book, that you had this um, envelope postmarked before they actually stole it. So you could say, I actually did um, have this on this date, but it's not a copyright and you won't get damages, statutory damages or attorney's fees. You can't sue someone over that. You can't sue, you can't sue someone for copyright infringement if you only have that poor man's copyright you would have to actually federally register your copyright and like i said it's pretty cheap it only starts at 35 dollars. that is amazing that was amazing great questions guys my superstars in the talent tribe uh, we're going to wrap it up here with miss sheena really appreciate you answering all those extra questions here at the end sheena where can we find you if we're so interested in seeking legal counsel from you well i have a website it's sheena king dot com and i'm also on instagram twitter periscope at attorney sheena and i have a youtube channel which is under sheena king i dig it i dig it and i just put a bunch of links out here for everybody joining us live they're going to be in the show notes for everybody catching us on stitcher podcast republic itunes and of course youtube the world's number two largest search engine owned by the world's number one largest search engine google where all of your podcasts should be going so you can find more followers and so they can find you sheena thanks again really appreciate it have a great evening okay bye guys <laughs>